Hey, welcome back to my channel. This is the 30th vlog in the series of the build of my model and skill train track. If you want to follow me in the whole process of building this table, please consider to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get notified for further videos. So today we're going to talk about power and adding power to the track and the upper deck. Here is the layout as I want to do it. Um, all buildings will be lit. I have street posts which will be lit. I have the tracks in which I'm going to use a motor driver which has its own power to the track. And the track runs on 12 volt DC. Also the lamppost which I'm using currently are running on 12 volt DC. I mentioned I'm going to use a Nano to control the whole system and the Nano itself runs on 5 volts and 3.3 volts. So the problem is that the 5 volts is not enough to provide power to the track. It is enough to put power to the motor driver to engage uh, the signals to the motor driver. So that is enough, but not using that power to power the rest. So not using a back converter to boost the voltage and then have the train run because that would cause damage to the Nano or to the Uno, which is here. Also the relays, the relay board itself they run on 5 volts, at least this board runs on 5 volts. I also have a board which runs on 12 volt to control the relays. But at a certain point, due to the many relays which needs to be driven, it will cost that the Nano will go bad. So I need to make another solution for that. And looking at all, it's going to be a lot of current which is flowing through uh, only the upper deck alone if I'm gonna lit or light up all the buildings. So this building will be lit up with minimum two, laps, uh, two uh, lights. I have this gas station over here. I have this shed uh, for the workers. I have two normal buildings. I have a factory over here, a light of a water tower over there. Everything uh, will be lit, so I need to have a strong power supply. And how are we going to do that? Well, I thought one of the things which is uh, used a lot is ATX power supplies for computers. So I looked up which power supplies I have, and I saw that uh, I had two types of power supplies. Well, actually, two. ADX power supplies. I have this one, which is a uh, reasonable size. You can mount it under the table and it provides 16 amps on 12 volt and 15 amps on 5 volt. And that would be more than enough to control the trains. So these pow power supplies itself, they don't have an on and off switch, but you can uh, regulate that by putting a connection from the green wire to the ground to have it powered on. I also have this power supply which is a little bit uh, less power. It has 12 amps on 12 volts and 15 amps on 5 volt. Uh, so on 12 volt it's a little bit lower but the 12 amps is actually more than enough. So I'm going to actually use this one because it produces less noise and that has to do with the type of fan which is inside. I checked both power supplies and both power supplies are in a good working condition. So I'm going to use those to control all the power and maybe I'm going to switch to this one as well uh, in the future or I'm going to use them both because I'm only having here the upper deck and I will show you an overview of what I currently have so that will now slide around starting with the town where the railway station is and then in the backyard you see the backdrop with a hill and a 
windmill and then going back to the lower deck and the upper deck you see uh, an overview of the upper deck as well and all those uh, tracks they need to be provided with power I know not all the tracks will have a train running but if I'm gonna put lighting and signaling etc next to the track it will be a lot of power so therefore it's recommended and they are very cheap you can buy it on eBay or on Amazon for cheap you can also buy a, a server power supply except for the server power supplies they make more noise because they have little fans inside and they run on high current and then will over saturate the noise of the train but with these power supplies these comes from uh, desktop PCs from uh, from Dell and they are also very cheap and they don't make that much of a noise so with each ATX power supply you can look up the uh, color coding and at least for uh, the, uh, these type of connectors you have the green wire you need to connect it through the black wire which is the ground and the green wire is the power OK power on OK so if we make a connection over here so like this I just put two pins together I sol solder them if I'm gonna put that this will power on uh, automatically the uh, power supply you can also use a power switch to do that which I'm gonna do later this one will be mounted under the table and I will put all the cabling as well the 5 volts as the 12 volt up to the upper deck I put a hole around here in the uh, lower deck where my power comes through and at the moment um, I'm using a 12 volt uh, sorry I'm using a 9 volt adapter to control the board which I already partially built which is underneath this uh, upper deck so this is the 9 volt pin but I can also change that for later on so coming to the power these are all the power cables which need to be connected to the motor drivers and let me show you what I built so far so this is the way the board will be positioned underneath the track and as you can see I did already a lot of wiring except for the uh, motor drivers they are wired one just to check if everything is okay I have the uh, pin of the I2C uh, outputs over here I have the PMW um, I2C controllers over here currently I'm controlling the relay board for the uh, turnouts and these will be used for the track so everything is built on this one uh, on, on this board as mentioned in the previous video so you can see how it is how it looks like uh, at this moment these knobs here they are to control the relay board so as you can see nothing is wired in so also these cables these power cables they have not been wired in so that is what I'm gonna do next so these switches are currently on the breadboard because that's the easiest way to do it at this moment but they will be put on a separate board in which which has the layout of the upper deck and it will be mounted beside the track so as mentioned I'm gonna use these uh, shields where you put the nano on and then you can easily connect everything and since almost everything is connected over I2C I will almost not use these input output pins they will be used for the switches but they will be controlled from a separate panel so that is what I'm gonna do next so I did the wiring so I jumped it from here to this motor driver to that motor driver back over here to this one and that one and then out here and then we can connect the power to here so we're going to connect the 5 volts the 12 volts and the ground so yellow is 12 and red is 5 volts so, and this would be long enough to extend the lead uh, to remove it from this area here to here 
So when there is something wrong or when I need to change something, I can easy, easily pull it out or I can push it back like this. So that is the wiring done for the 5 volts and the 12 volts. And now we need to wire in all these cables for the tracks. So I have uh, numbered them. So we have a uh, train yard track 1, 2, 3 and so on and so on. So looking at how the cables run. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this one will go all the way underneath. You actually need, make, need to make it as long as possible so that we have enough play. So when I position it over here, I can still easily push it back. So this would be the length. So let me put solder on. That is the one. So, all wires have been connected. So this is track number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. So this is empty so we can still use it for something different. Next thing, what we're going to do is we're going to re put really power on the track. So I'm going to connect this to my power supply. I'm gonna hook up the Arduino. I'm gonna hook up all these wires. So I have here some jumper wires. So for example, this one will be connected with four connectors. So that will be these four. And then it will be connected to these outputs. The same what I'm going to do here. So I wrote a program in the Arduino to uh, have each channel be tested. So this is track number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. All uh, are rewired correctly and the green LED will show that there is positive voltage on the track which means the train goes forward and the red, uh, red LED will lit if it is in reverse so let me test that output and for your information it will be two seconds green two seconds red and then power will be turned off. 
So now we have two seconds green, two seconds red, and then the power will be off. That means that section is okay. So now we're going to test all the tracks, but I will show you a small test device which I built. It's just a piece of wood with two LEDs in it, a green one and a red one, which will check if there is power to the track. So now we're going to test if there is power to the track. I wrote a small program on the Arduino to put power on the track for five seconds. And if the green LED on the wooden block is lit, then it is forward following the arrow. If the red LED is lit, then it is backwards. So the program does the following. I first select the track. So you can see on the screen, it asked me to put in the track which I would like to test. It is from left to right from this view. So left track where the wooden block is, is number one. And then up going to six. And then the other track for the locomotive is track number seven. And the main track is track number eight. So we're gonna follow the uh, same procedure for each track. I'm gonna put in the number that I have approximately uh, 10 seconds to put everything correctly on the track and to see if the track has the correct power. So first it should lit green for five seconds and then red for five seconds and then the power will be disconnected. So let's start with the test. Starting with track number one. holding the block and after 10 seconds or so green is lit for five seconds red is lit for five seconds and then the power will be turned off that means the power on this track is okay it is in the right direction so up to track number two <laughs> So that means all tracks except for track number five have an issue. So I will need to check that where the connection is. I will be using a multimeter to do that. So I'm gonna check on the resistance. So the power is already off the track. So that one is okay. And that one is also okay. So there must be something in the program. I can actually also measure the voltage on the track. So let me check five again. So there is power to the track. Let's do it with the tester again. You see, green light lit first, and then red, which means all power 
is correctly mounted. So that's going to be it for this video. The next video we're going to connect the turnouts so that they can be switched. So if you like these videos, please hit the like button. If you want to see more of these videos, please consider to subscribe to my channel. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.